Let's take a look at a Chinese roadwork style beacon. It says, uh, open the switch for assembling, flashing automatically at night and charging automatically in sunshine, not flashing. It's available in many forms and colours, including ones that go in the top of a cone or a pole, and other ones that are clearly designed to screw to surfaces. It's a, a wide variety of uh, styles for many applications. To demonstrate this, I can turn it on, but nothing is going to happen. Well, actually, if I hold it like this, you'll see the blink inside. But I shall change the lighting so you can actually see what it looks like in the dark. It looks like this. And unlike the other beacons I looked at recently, it's a very brief flash and not a 50% on off. OK, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. The light is back. Let's take it apart. And that's not too hard. Now, the switch, incidentally, uh, is just an ordinary little switch in there. That's possibly a weakness. I'm not sure. It's worth mentioning the solar panel is not on the outside. It's behind this clear plastic layer that is glued over the top. And then this screws on with the wire to the switch being twisted in the process, removing it. And inside is a... 80, uh, an 18650, that's not right. A double A size nickel metro hydride sub, look of it. Is that thing glued together? Uh, and the circuit board. Well, let's take things out. There are three LEDs. There is the little inductor to boost the voltage. And then there's a dedicated chip. And it's got multiple resistors. I wonder if that could be used to change the mark space ratio or if it's fixed. We'll find out. I shall experiment with that. So I tell you what, I shall take this stuff out of here uh, and then we'll take a look at it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete and the first surprise here is that the solar panel is a sticker. It's a real solar panel, but it's literally a thin plastic film with the uh, silicon actually just stuck onto that. And unfortunately, that means that as you take it out, it just cracks and breaks. It's very much a one-way trip. You cannot service the solar panels and then you could put a new one in if you wanted. I guess that's just the cheapest way of doing things. On the circuitry, we have a fairly standard arrangement. It's a ZX806 chip, and I did not find that on a Google search, but I did find it on a DuckDuckGo search. But it was a Chinese website that wanted me to sign in to see more than the first couple of sheets of the data sheet, so that didn't happen. However, I got enough information from those first couple of pages. There are three control pins in this chip. One can be toggled, it's the mode, and uh, it can be toggled between the positive and the negative, or left floating, to determine, well, I'll show you afterwards, that it goes into a 50-50 sort of flashing mode. It might have a static mode if these resistors aren't here. I'm not sure. But uh, the resistors here, there's a high-value one, and that sets the off time, and there's a lower value on 10k that sets it on time. And you can vary these resistors to actually change the mark space ratio to whatever you want. But at the moment, as you can see, it's set to just brief pulses. And I'll demonstrate the difference you can make with resistors in a moment. This inductor, it's very small, 15 micro Henry. They may be going for high intensity pulses, but keeping them very short. And that's why they've used such a low value inductor. Generally speaking, the lower the value inductor, the higher the current uh, with this type of circuitry. Um, the solar lights tend to use something like 150 microhenry as opposed to this 1, 5 and 0 as a decimal multiplier. Um, but they are aiming for longer run times overnight and because their light is lit continuously. OK, let me show you the thing's different modes. So I shall bring in a resistor substitution box. I shall zoom down this. And I shall bring in my test meter just to use its leads to probe onto that circuit board with resistors. So, if I go from the negative, which is the common here, to the mode, it immediately starts doing a 50-50 mark space ratio. Um, if I go to positive with that, it was supposed to do something different, but it doesn't. Maybe that is what enables the, uh, the resistor set mode. However, if I go on to this pin here with this 4.7k resistor that I've got set, you can see that that's the off duration that's now strobing at high speed. And likewise, if I go on to the on pin, it's reduced it to the briefest of pulses that can barely be caught by the camera. And yeah, 
when I take it back off, it increases the length of that pulse. You can set the duty cycle. That's quite neat. It means you could, well, it's kind of literally designed for strobes, isn't it? Let me show you the Schematic. And here it is. So this is fairly typical of the solar light circuits. We've got the nickel metal hydride cell. So that's 1.2 volts. In fact, the 1.2 volt and 0 volt down here. And it's got the switch, it doesn't matter which leg it's in. They used it in the negative. Interestingly, they used red for negative and uh, black for positive, as they do. There's the solar panel, just a four-strip panel, putting out about two volts, which then goes via a diode, and is also used as a light sensor. Here are the resistors that can change the mode, or you can set the on-time and the off-time. Um, and there's the 50 microhenry inductor going to the LEDs and in normal operation, the voltage of the cell isn't enough to go through, pass through the inductor and actually like that, well, like the LEDs because they require typically more than 1.2 volts. But uh, when it starts pulsing this inductor to the zero volt rail in cycles, it uh, builds up a magnetic field and then as it claps, it adds onto the uh, nickel metal hydride sound. It's enough to make the, the red LEDs light. And that is it. So it was an interesting little circuit it wasn't huge expense because it is just a beacon if you want i shall provide a link to aliexpress for that in case you're wondering why i'm wearing a glove in one hand it's because i've taken an allergic reaction to something not sure what it is but it's looking quite angry so i just thought i'd put this on to protect it but there we have it it's kind of worth it for the little uh, circuit but it's a shame it the solar panel is destroyed in the process of of procuring that but that is it. Uh, kind of better than the previous uh, solar beacon lights I looked at recently, which uh, were strictly a 50% on and off ratio, 50-50, uh, because they drained the battery quite quickly. But this one, particularly because this battery is labelled 800 milliamp power, so maybe it is actually rated for proper sort of like roadwork type use. Quite an interesting little beacon.